it's me, Lasagna with Miss Doss Anime Creations, and today I come to you with, I think this is flower tutorial number five. I know it's been a while, but I really got to be in the mood to make them, guys. So, today I have been in my craft house and I was making these flowers, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't think I did a tutorial <laughs> in a while. So I said, you know what, let's turn on the camera. So I bought, I'm in the midst of making some, and I said, well, I can continue on so today i'm bringing you the heartfelt creations while esther uh, esther esther <laughs> y'all see the name and i hauled these before so this is this this um stamp and this is the die all right so i'm going to do a start to finish first thing i like to do uh i have done let me show you some that i have drying I can pick it up without moving them. Here are the ones that I've done with colored paper. Aren't they beautiful? I absolutely love how these turn out. And then, uh oh, I almost dropped it. Need them to completely dry. Let them dry for 24 hours before I mess with them. And then I started doing some with white paper and stamping them in color and I absolutely love that as well and these are the different sizes as well so you're gonna see all of that all right let me put those back so they can dry okay so I have where is my this is my squishy y'all remember my squishy I've already got some that's already been stamped but I want to show you because I'm still like I said I'm still making them so let's bring some stuff out here Leave that there. And we're going to use white. White paper. And I use the Michaels 65 pound. So I think that's good enough for flowers. You don't have to go thicker than that. And the first thing I do is when I'm working with, I like to do two colors at a time. And it's like a assembly line. I cut my paper. It doesn't have matter how straight you do it, guys. So that cuts four. That's two. And this is the way that I do it. You don't have to do it this way. This is just the way that I do it. Okay? So, make sure y'all got enough light. I have them on my blocks already. And I'm going to use for these, even though I already have them stamped, the one I'm going to cut out, I, need to, I like them to dry before I start cutting. So I'm going to use uh, Distress Oxide spice, Spiced Marmalade and Broken China. I want these two colors as well. So let's do the lighter color first. When I do the first stamp, this is to make one flower of each size, guys. So let me show you again. Over here. Like, look at this purple. I love how this purple turned out. This is the large, medium, small, extra small. I don't know if I'm going to keep making the extra smalls. I think these three sizes are good, but I'm going to do it just for now. You never know. Just throw them on a card or whatever, and it's just the right size. But, you know. So, to make just one of each of those, I am... I love the Distress Oxides. So, I'm using these, and I like to stamp I do it three times that's how many it takes so every time I stamp guys this is making those those uh, four flowers only so this is what I mean by it take you a minute you know to uh, for me to decide I'm gonna make some flowers and then I turn it the opposite way this is just easier for me when I am lining up as well as cutting them out which y'all will see momentarily but I wanted to stamp these and get these drying and that's the perfect way to show y'all how to stamp them for those that never work with heartfelt creations flower stamp so see it's going that way I turn it the other way and I line it up here so I stamp it three times for that color because remember I got to do two different colors and I set it to the side. I'm letting it dry. Let's put it right there for a second. 
put those over there. And what I do is before each one of changing colors, I like to scrub it so to be drying while I'm doing the other one. This is a, a stamping scrub. I think that's what it's called from Stampin' Up. That just cleans it. This side, dry. this side dries it. I can tell which way it is. I hope I'm not shaking y'all too much because of on here it has a sun in this corner and raindrops on that side. So I know that means wet and dry. So I do that before each one so that'll be drying while I'm doing the next step. So with this flower, I ink it up the same way. Now go ahead and work with the same color until I switch to the next color. You'll see in just a second. I do it the same way. So if I stamp this way, matter of fact, let me do it right here because I don't think that's even. I'm pressing down on my squishy. It just gives it just enough bounce to get a great impression. Now you can see the big flower and the two small are going that way. So what I do is flip it so it's going the other way. This is where I can get more of my stamp images on the paper. Okay. So you can see now it's on that side. I like to keep rotating because if you stack, if you keep stamping them the same way, you're not going to, you're going to be wasting paper. Because you know the petals will be touching each other. I only need three. I'm glad I remembered that. <laughs> Again, that was spice marmalade. I'm gonna go ahead and put this up on my shelf. And I'm gonna go in and clean this. Move that to the side. And then we're gonna stamp the other color. And this is why I do two at one time, two colors clean and dry. All right. So now I'm going to get another one and we're going to stamp it with the broken china. I wanted a teal as well. Uh -oh. And then remember, this is just making four one of each size. So when I want to make a lot of the same size, it's a lot of stamping. So that's why I said I like to, um, some days I'll do all the stamping. And then the next day I'll do all the cutting and I just put them in a basket. I'm going to show you all the basket in just a second. And when I want to, uh, put some flowers together, they're already in the basket for me to, to do. Now, I wanted to try out this way. So I was like, ooh, and then I fell in love. And I'm like, I got matching prills. I'm like, yes, perfect. Hope y'all can see me good. Hope I'm not shaking too much. I absolutely love this flower dye, dye stamp set. So it takes three of the big stamps and three of the small stamps to make the four flowers. Uh oh. Very dark Let me turn that. <laughs> I had a movie paused and now it wanted to play. So I put that to the side and let that dry. Now I'm going to continue on on this side after I clean it. Because I know I'll be using this again today today is a flower making to see all them suds and then i'm drying it on this side i love this little thing i've had this for several years when i used to buy a lot of stamping up stuff clean i like it to dry in between each one so that's why i do it like that now we're going to do this one again three times and that will make both colors one flower size each. Big flowers in there. Get it close as I can. This is gonna be pretty. Very pretty. I think I'm 
think they turned out very nice. At first, I didn't know if I wanted to do um, the uh, white. I like to do it with the color paper. Matching color and then just do a darker color of the ink. But it turned out real nice. I'm like, oh my gosh, yes. I need to do some of the... Oh, I hope I didn't do it too short. I think I did. Did I have one more piece? I didn't pull that one close enough. I normally can do that. So let me cut one more piece because I don't want that to touch, guys. Hold on. There's one pack of paper gone. Oh, there it is right there. I knew I had cut four. There we go. I'm going to still use that in a minute because we're not doing a tutorial. But there it is. I'm like, I knew I remember seeing one. I'm just going to ink it one more time. I usually can get, you'll see on the other one that we're going to actually cut out. I usually can get six stamps on there. I didn't go close enough on this orange. I should have went down just a little bit more. There we go. And we're going to put these up on the shelf. And we're going to put these aside to dry. I like these to dry thoroughly before I start messing with them. So that's what we're going to do with that. Let me clean and get this out the way. Clean. Love it. So we can move these out of the way for right now. And I'm going to show you my basket. So this is how I just put them in there. I just throw them in there. Get this out of the way. We need this. All right, so now we're going to do cut out. So you can see here I got red and yellow is what I did this time, red and yellow. And then on here, see how I did that? I'm able to usually get three stamp sets there. So let's pull out our big kick. It doesn't call for the plus yet. <laughs> All right. Roll these sleeves up. All right. So, to cut them out, we just take our time. There's no rush. These babies are well loved. I got my magnetic platform. And I use my mine until... These suckers break. You hear me? They work. They work. I have new ones. And that's for when they break. Just like I used my last ones. Until they cracked in half and I couldn't use them. Alright. So let me make sure I'm in frame. I got it lined up. And we're going to cut it out. For me, I like to um, go forwards and then backwards. I just like to have one little cut and I'm not worried about all that rest stuff. So let me put my basket here. No, I don't need a basket. We've got, we're about to make these. So if I have any leftovers, I'll throw them in the basket. All right. So that makes a large one, large one. And we just keep cutting guys, line them, lining them up. Now, one thing I have noticed sometimes, I have uh, thought I lined it up. I am on my magnetic platform, but it'll move. I don't know why it's moving. It might be because my plates are rounded a little bit. They're not really, really straight, you know. I just have to keep watching it when I run it through. But if these babies work, I'm not um, going to replace them until they crack all the way through it'll be okay some people like to change theirs all the time these plates are not cheap <laughs> so mine are gonna be used till they can't be used no more i'd rather spend my money on other stuff than keep replacing the same thing when you really don't have to so i do have a crack in that one but it still works it's not broken all the way through Okay, now with this die set too, I know y'all probably saw the leaves in that basket that I showed you. I like my um, leaves that I bought. 
um i forgot where i got it from this is a large that's an extra so i throw it in the basket but i do need the medium all right so two large and a medium two medium that's that first one i'm gonna go ahead and cut out the second and then we can do the next ones And this is for those I like to do thorough um, tutorials so you can fast forward if you want to but I'm going to go through each step guys to show how I make it I just I just love this one I, I got some I haven't played with yet and I got those before I got this one and I played with this one and I'm like oh my gosh yes I've got to make these now I like to do three layers that's why it's taking so many um cuts and stamp images okay i like to do three layers i know some people like to do more than that I like to do six layers or five layers on the petals i like the three when i played with this die the first time i cut out so many to see how i liked them stacked up and i liked the three i liked the three I'm gonna like it. <laughs> Alright. That yellow is gonna be gorgeous. Alright, so two and one. And then one there. And once these are all cut out, it goes by pretty fast. But like I said, I like to do it. Uh oh. See how I got this top one straight? The bottom one is not. You have to look at it when you're putting it on there. Y'all are being shaped by me using this. I'm sorry. There's no way to get around that. My, you see where my camera is. Okay. Extra. So when I do yellow again, that's I have extra. So that's that one. All right. Now we can switch to the smaller one. So I love how they have the outline on the um, sheet. So I can line it right back up. I know where it goes. And I pick up this one, and now we're going to cut out these. So, with this one, it's tricky as well. You want to make sure that you got the top and the bottom lined up. The middle will be okay. See how I have the top lined up, but the bottom still not lined up. You have to move it around. Even though this is one die, you still have to make sure that it's in place. Now, my um, bit kit, the pressure is off on this side, so I like to turn it around when I do the next one because it always like sticks for some reason. It's probably, like I said, the pressure, but all right, so this is the small. I need to put one with that one. Now these, boy, these suckers are tiny. Alright. So, I'm going to turn it this way. And cut this one out. A stitch. Yeah, I think she's knocking on my, my door. <laughs> It'll be okay. Alright. But I like the cool fact that, um, you know, I can make, I can finish with two flowers. All right, so that's that one. I can finish with two different colors at one time. That's three. Okay. Let me turn it back this way. This is probably the longest part, guys, is cutting it out. But you get to see in real time what I how I do it, you know. I think I did that with all mine. I don't think I fast forwarded through any of my flower tutorials. So y'all can see the time that it takes to make the flowers, you know. Alright, so that's the two mediums. That's the small. Okay, so these two can go in the bucket, I think. Let me see. One, two, three, yeah. So I got extra two small ones. 
right? Now we're cutting out these yellow. I think that yellow's going to pop. And I've just been going through my distress inks and seeing the bright colors. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I could do that one. And then I made sure I had the matching um, prills to go with it. But you know what? You don't have to have the matching prills. I mean, I have uh, prills that are um, gold and bronze and all of that. That goes in the center, too. And then some have um, the green. You know, a lot of flowers have that green in the middle. And um, I actually like this flower with the prills. Because y'all know I have the stamens and all of that too. There's another way to make these flowers too. I have not tried that yet. But um, I've been in love with these. So, okay, that's the medium. Did I just go up and say, oh, no, I ripped it. I didn't. So that one goes there. It's not stuck, guys. This is just because uh, it's so tiny, intricate. And one for that one. Last one. Yay. <laughs> for the video anyway, huh? Oh, see, that's off. Okay, so let's make sure everything's lined up. Last one, and then we can start. All right, last one. Let's do this. All right, we are done cutting. Hallelujah! All right, so that two, two, and these are the two extra. Just gonna throw them in my basket. All right, so let's put the cutting big kick away. Let's get down to the shaping, guys. All right, so we're going to put this die back in its spot, which I love. All right, now. Uh-oh. I take my mat out. Now, I do have this David Torella's, I think they call it the twirling, curling, petal curler or something like that. It's by Sizzix. I, I used it, I tried it. I didn't like how the petals were. So I just use my handy dandy bone folder. This is my smallest bone folder. And so what I do, I go ahead and get them on my mat. And I just take it, I hold my fingers here, and I curl downward. Now, see, the, the stamp's image is up. I'm curling the petals downward. I'm not pulling too hard. You don't want to pull your petals off, guys. So I curl it down like a little spider. And I do the whole one color at a time. And y'all will see why in just a second. I like to do them all at the same time. So I'll just curl it. I'll just keep curling. I think this worked out way better than that uh, curling tool. All right, so that's one. That's the big size. And then we have the medium. It's the fun part to me. <laughs> I love it. Y'all know I love making flowers. But you got to be in the mood sometime when you got so many steps. But I think this is the easier one than the other tutorials that I showed y'all. And I like the different looks of the flowers. All right. 
right, that's the small. Got two of those, and like I said, I like to do three, three layers. That works out best for me, because I like the way that that looks. These smaller ones, boy. That's why I said I don't know if I'm gonna keep doing the teeny tiny. This size here. This size, the small ones. I just use three of the same size for these. It's just harder to uh, curl down. I feel like I'm going to rip the petals off because it's so little and I'm trying to hold on to it in the middle. But that's all right. And while I'm at it, let me show y'all how this... Let me do it on the yellow. I'm going to say I will show y'all how that worked, but this is the tiny tiny one. I want to go and get that one done. And I'll show y'all how it, how it curls using that tool. Alright, so now that I got all of them curled down, I'm using my balling tool. I have a whole set of different sizes that you use these, and I like this size. What I do is I match it to the center of what I'm trying to uh, uh, whatever, punch down. <laughs> So what I do is I just take it and I go, now remember this is my squishy pad, so it gives me that little extra cushion. I just push down and go around in a circle. Y'all probably gonna shake again. Down, and I'm pushing down to get that center to cup. And this works great because I got that little extra cushion. Now, going down the size, I'm gonna use this bottom one. I need that little indentation to give me that little um, cup to fill it, okay? So now I'm gonna take my glue, and today I'm using the Barely Art glue. Barely Art glue, my tweezers, and all I do is pick up one, turn it over on the back, and put a little glue, and then you offset on top. So I'm trying to put it in between the open spot of the pedal. Now what if you use wet glue, you have time to adjust. So if you, you didn't think that was close enough, you can adjust it. So that's what we're gonna do to all these pedals. And then I put it right in the middle again. Center. Boom. I love it. Alright, let's do the next one. This is the medium. And see, I like to work on two at a, two colors at a time because then it gives this one time to dry while I'm working on the next set before I go to the next, you know, next phase, next step. No, I'm talking about next phase. Next step of what I'm going to do with the flowers. It doesn't take a lot of glue. Remember to offset. And put that one on the bottom. And then this one is the little one I was saying. All I'm doing is offsetting, making sure they're all the, the petals are in between each other. All right, so while that's drying a bit, we're going to start on this one, curling it, and then we'll go to the next step. This is how the process that I do, guys, I'm working with two colors. So, all right, so with this leaf, or leaf, I don't know the exact name, guys, but it's Sizzix David Tortella, I think that's how you say his name, flower curler, maybe. You would stick it in between there and then curl down. I did this several times, but then when I take this, I get a better curl. Look at that. I know y'all see the difference than that and that. So that's why I use my bone folder. 
Okay, it just turned out better. Curled enough depth that I needed. So while those are drying, I'm going to curl these. When I get through curling these, we'll go back to them and finish over there. And I do as many as I can on here. There we go. I love this yellow. This is going to be so pretty. And so you see I stamped that other, those other two colors before we started. Well, when we started. So those will be nice and dry. Won't be, you know, it won't get those smudges or anything like that from the ink. You know, this is distress ink. So it's activated with liquid. And you know, I'm using wet glue. So I always make sure that they're dry. This one. And so what I do is when I'm doing this, guys, I normally just have my TV shows on. Um, my, all the recordings I've been <laughs> recording. So that when I'm in my craft house, I can uh, sit and watch and, and enjoy whatever season I'm on on whatever I'm watching. I watch Netflix, whatever. When I'm in the flower making mood, that's what I do. And since I got back into this paper crafting, y'all know I've been away from it for a while. Sometimes you get burnt out. And uh, so I've been doing my diamond paintings, but I've been loving making these flowers. I was in a swap, so I'm like, ooh, yes. Let me try this. You know, let me play with this. Let me punch this out. Let me work with that. So I got back into the paper. And I said, oh, I'm going to make some flowers. In the middle of making, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to do a tutorial. All right. So now I'm going to take, we're going to work with the red again. And all I'm doing is pushing down in the center. I'm trying to make a cup. Make it that, you know, that bevel look. Okay. So I'm going to get out for the red where i'm going to use red is right red it's right and you remember i got my prills these are my prills i got these from um heartfelt creations all right so what i do is i fill the cups i go around the edge with my glue and then I fill it in with glue. Okay, I'm gonna get y'all closer up so y'all can see what I'm doing. See that? I went around the edge and then I filled it up. So I'm doing that with all four of these. All right, now that that's done, I take, where is it? Here it is. Take my little scoop, came with my prills. I like to do it over my paper. I don't mind that it's wasting, that's what the paper's there for. And I fill it in. It doesn't matter if it's overfilled because I will be pouring it back in here. So I put that on there and put these back in the jar. And we're just gonna put this to the side. Let that do that for a second. And we're gonna go back to the, the yellow. You see there is a method to my madness, huh? <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing with the yellow. I am pressing down so I can get that indentation too. There. I'll still use this side for this one. And then switch to the smaller one when you get smaller. 
And because of this squishy mat, which I got from Scrapbook and Made Easy, if y'all didn't know, it, it rolls real nice on here. Okay, this is a very super thick foam. I'll show you that in a little bit. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to go ahead and glue. Whoa. With them alternating. Did y'all see I had, to, I had to move it a little bit? That's what I love about the glue, the wet glue. Thought I had you. Nice. Move it just a little bit. Perta. Use this one. And the reason I do it like this is it gives that time to set up and these to dry so it's like doing it in a you know assembly line sort of and I'm offsetting this one up I did it but it's uh, off a little bit so let's do it again make sure we are between there we go I have to push that one down a little bit harder because that little bevel is gone but I pulled it up before it uh, stuck all the way down guys This one here and then we're going to go to the next one so once you get through with that guys it doesn't take long look how pretty I'm loving them okay is it there we go I said it's not all right so there's the yellows and I'm going to keep these on this side, these on this side. Let those dry for just a second. And now I'm going to take off the first layer of red. I just put it on my little paper right here. Just hit it a little bit. That's the first layer. I like to do two layers. It makes it look more 3D to me. Just knock it. There we go. All right, so I let that dry without the extra on it and we're gonna do the yellow one. And then we'll come back and do the second layer of the red and these babies are done. Well, besides the yellow. Cause I like them to dry just a little bit. All right, so I'm going to use this balling tool, push down in the center. I'm not going around in a circle like when we made them. There we go. I'm just making a pocket, in other words, so that I can fill in with the prills. All right, so for these, the yellow, I'm going to use, you had me at yellow. Prills. All right, let's put the glue in here. Had it to open too long before. What are you doing? Okay, there we go. I'm like, come on. <laughs> All right, I'm just filling it in. Absolutely loving these colors. Can't wait to get these other ones done. All 
Yeah, we go. Now we're going to put the yellow on here. I'm fill it in, and I like to get it all over. So it don't matter that I got it overfilled, guys, because I pour the excess excess back on this paper. I'm gonna shake them and put it back in there. Cause look, uh oh, how much I just used on there and when I fill it back up it's gonna be back to the top again. Uh oh. You gotta, gotta do this. Now let's do this yellow the red one more time and then we'll do the yellow and we are done. Absolutely love it. So what I do is because this is not totally dry because I put a big glob, it's not a, you know, a small drop, it's a big glob to hold the prills down. I lightly go around the top again. Just let the glue fill in. Try not to touch the prills. And then I try to fill it in. Going back and forth, just fill in the glue on top of it. And this way, the second layer will go on top. I just like the way it looked when I had that double layer. It's like a 3D in the center. Or like when you have a jewel, a gem in the middle, how it pops out from the center. That is kind of what the prills are doing. They're not sunk in. All right, let's do the red one more time and then we'll set them to the side to dry. Yeah, I'm absolutely loving using the white with the stamped image. I've been doing them with the, uh, I don't know why it's got chunks in it. Um, I'm gonna leave this one on there because sometimes it comes through because you got so much glue on there. You'll see wet spots, so. There we go. I'm gonna leave that on there for a minute. I don't know why I got a big chunk. I just squeeze it down. Sometimes they stick and they make big rock shapes, kind of. Pour it back in there. And I leave that on there for a little bit. Let's get this yellow off. And we will be done. I'm absolutely loving how these turned out. I just tap it. That's the first layer. And I let them sit, like I said, for 24 hours before I mess with them. After I've done all of this, I let them sit over there on my shelf 24 hours to let them thoroughly dry. All right, let's go ahead and do... second and we will be done I'm loving these guys and I'm gonna show y'all the finished product again and all those punches all those uh, stamped images and cutting out were for just these four flowers so you have to remember that when y'all want to make some. If you're doing just three layers. Now just imagine how much you have to do if it's, if y'all like more than three layers. And there are some people that do six, seven layers. There we go. Ooh, I was lucky. Cause that's not all the way good enough dry right now. So some of it was moving, but I like to get them on there so they'll be I can go ahead and let them start drying. Second round. And I don't care that it's getting all over my mat and all of that. These prills go a long way. 
that's on my matter, I would just throw them in the trash. It's not no big deal to me. The little little bitty that's left, if I can't get it off, I don't worry about that. These prills, there's a lot of prills. But the ones I get on the paper, of course, I want to keep them in there. All right, so that is how you do the double layers. I know y'all probably think it's a hot mess, but it's not. It's just they're on there to dry. I probably can take the red off now so you can see that, but the yellow needs to stay on just a little bit longer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at the difference. Look at that big... Now, y'all know y'all can see the glue, but once that's dry, you won't be able to see that. So these will be set to the side. Yes, I love how the centers look. Plump. Absolutely love it. Look at that. I love it. See these little bit right here? I'll try to get it off. But you know I got yellow on that side. So it's not no big deal. Alright, so I'm going to stick these to the side. Let's put these over here on top of this set. And we'll let y'all see it. I want to put them in size order so y'all can see the difference here. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, so the red, we're going to start down here so we have more room. Beautiful. Absolutely love it. Let me show you the ones that have already been drying. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? My hand's shaking. But isn't that beautiful, guys? I absolutely love these. These are gorgeous. I'm going to add those on there. And then here are the bigger ones that were stamped with um, colored paper. So that's just with these right here. You can see that. Still not all the way dry, but look at the, the differences. They're both beautiful. I love how these turned out. Let me get this out of the way before I spill it everywhere. And then I'll be mad. <laughs> Alright, so that red is up. So y'all let me know what you think, guys. I'm just let that sit for a second while you look at these beauties. And I will finish doing some more flowers. Those colors that we had did already. Um, stamp the orange and the teal. And then I'm going to call it a day with the stamping and with making these flowers. You know, you get burnt out, guys. But anyway, <laughs> y'all let me know what you think. I'm so happy I got another flower tutorial up. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, guys, bye-bye.